I have made video after video about JavaScript APIs that have been added to the language or will be added soon. But this made me really curious to know where do these APIs come from? Who creates them? Who decides if they should be added or not? And what would I have to do if I wanted to create a new JavaScript API? I want to share what I learned with you on this video. Let's pretend that we wanted to add a new API to JavaScript, an API that does not exist yet, an emoji API. The emoji API would look something like this. This hypothetical API would have a class name emoji that has two methods from string and to string. From string will take the name of an emoji as a string and output the emoji. And to string will take an emoji and output the name of the emoji. Even though our emoji API is pretty useless, let's say that we wanted to include this in the JavaScript language anyway. For this, we have to talk to ECMA International. ECMA, which stands for European Computer Manufacturers Association, is a non-for-profit organization that is dedicated to creating standards. You can think of a standard as a set of rules and specifications of how a language looks like and how it should work. They not only standardize the JavaScript language, they also provide standards for the Dart programming language and the C Sharp programming language. And they not only do programming languages, there are lots of standards, from cryptographic standards to holographic data storage standards and more. What we're looking for is the ECMA 262 standard, which defines ECMAScript. ECMAScript is the name of the standard that JavaScript follows. Inside of ECMA International, there are committees that all work on and support different standards. The committee in charge of developing the ECMAScript standard is the Technical Committee 39 or TC39. According to their website, they are a group of JavaScript developers, implementers, academics, and more. They meet every two months to discuss the proposals of new features, and they decide what gets added to the specification or not. They keep all their notes of their meetings in GitHub, where you can see what they have been talking about since 2012. There, you can also see who attends these meetings, which is people from Google, Apple, Mozilla, Alibaba, IBM, Dino, Microsoft, Netflix, and more. To have the TC39 discuss our Emoji API proposal on their next meeting, we have two options. One option is to become an ECMA member, which would cost us 70,000 Swiss francs, which is almost 80,000 USD. The other option we have to make our Emoji API dream come true is to find someone who is already a member of TC39 to champion or support our proposal and make the case for it on the next meeting. There is a a discussion group and chat rooms we can use to find a TC39 member that finds our proposal useful and that helps us move it through the process. For a proposal to go from an idea to being real, it has to go to a five-stage process. At every step of the process, the TC39 committee needs to vote to move the proposal to the next exchange and can request changes if needed. When we find the champion or champion group for our emoji proposal, the proposal will be stage zero. Stage zero are proposals that are planned to be presented to the committee by a TC39 champion or proposals that have been already presented to the committee but that don't have all the requirements to move to stage one. In this table, we can see what each stage means and the requirements to get into the next one. Stage one is a formal proposal of a feature. To move to stage one, among many things, we have to have a champion, explain the problem our API solves, how it would look, the algorithms it would use, the challenges of the proposal, and more. We also have to have polyfills and demos of our API. Stage two is a first version of what will be in the specification. If our emoji API proposal hits stage two, it means that it is very likely that it is going to be included in the specification. To move to stage two, we have to have a formal description of the syntax and semantics of our emoji API. Stage three means that our proposal is finished and we are now looking for feedback from implementations and users. At this point, our specification must be complete. Reviewers and editors must sign off on the spec text, and there must be at least two spec compliant implementations. Finally, we reach stage four, which means the proposal is finished and the implementations are stable and ready to ship. An implementation in this context means that the people that make the browsers and JavaScript engines read the specification we wrote and actually write the C++ code that makes JavaScript behave as the specification says it should. Because that is all ECMAScript is. 
a specification. JavaScript is an implementation of this specification. We can take a look at the source code of some engines, like the WebKit engine used by Safari, and we can see how JavaScript functions like get element by ID are actually implemented on C++. Or we can see how the console.log we are used to is implemented as well. And that's it. That's how we can go from an idea to our proposal being implemented. All the proposals are tracked on GitHub, so anyone can easily check them out and see see what is being worked on, which proposals are going to be added soon, and which ones are experimental but are coming as well. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. Your subscription means a lot to me. It motivates me on creating quality content every week. So please don't forget to hit that button. Onjana kamsahago, sana hamida. See you on the next one. Dame bye bye.